The 1981 arcade classic Donkey Kong is one of the most important games for Nintendo. This little arcade game pretty much established Nintendo as a gaming power in the early 1980s and will be one of the seeds that will turn the company into the gaming powerhouse we know it as today. The success of Donkey Kong would kickstart a little series that tried to continue its awesomeness, such as the similarly awesome Donkey Kong Jr., the not as awesome but still decent Donkey Kong 3, and whatever the hell Donkey Kong Jr. math was. And, of course, the series would ultimately give birth to one of the biggest franchises of video games, the Super Mario series. However, throughout the rest of the 1980s and into the early 1990s, Nintendo started to leave Donkey Kong behind in favor of the wildly successful Mario series. Donkey Kong was starting to become old news, but one day in the late 1980s, it seemed like Donkey Kong was going to make a grand return with a new sequel to the arcade classic on the Famicom slash NES. Until it never came out, which sucks, and I want to talk about it. So, today on Bay of Quest, I will be talking about the return of Donkey Kong. In the late 1980s, Nintendo was riding high with the colossal success of the NES, with their smash hit franchises of Mario, Zelda, Metroid, among many more, as well as their tight third party control, allowing them to have an iron grip over the entire industry. However, with this success and these major franchises starting to blossom, one franchise seems to have remained dormant, despite being the franchise that helped establish Nintendo as a gaming giant. Donkey Kong, as I've mentioned before. Sure, the series had three arcade titles under its belt, which ranged from huge success to not as huge success, as well as an educational game, but aside from pouring these games over to the NES, the old Donkey Kong series hadn't seen much attention in terms of new content. That was until a series of blurbs were found on various Nintendo-related gaming magazines in 1987, specifically Nintendo Power and Nintendo Fun Club, that revealed the existence of a fourth mainline installment to the Donkey Kong series. Titled The Return of Donkey Kong and believed to have had a planned release date of 1988 or 1989, there's not much known to this mysterious little game other than it would have been a grand return to the somewhat dormant character. However, aside from that, what was known about this grand return of Donkey Kong was that the game was to have seen Donkey Kong as a playable character, with the ability to throw barrels being a mechanic in this game. But, unfortunately, following these blurbs, the game would ultimately disappear from public view and would never be mentioned again, but there is a little bit of speculation as to what happened to this game. The most common and logical belief was that the game was simply cancelled, with some believing that the game didn't even make it past conceptual stages. This is the commonly accepted answer. However, another theory that has been thrown around recently was that the game could have been a fake that was acquired somehow by these official gaming magazines. And by fake, I mean the game was, uh, was not real, it didn't exist at all, it was just a made up thing. This is because the title, albeit misspelled, can be found in the catalog of upcoming releases from a gaming store called Play It Again around the same time as these blurbs. And Play It Again was reported by former employees to have put in fake games as traps to screw over competitors trying to copy their listings. Considering that virtually nothing about this game even exists aside from a writing or two, some believe that the game was a fake invention created by Play It Again that got swept up by Nintendo Power and Nintendo Fun Club. However, there is no verification of this theory and it's simply just that, a theory. And even then, it is also possible that Play It Again saw the blurbs in Nintendo Power and assumed it was going to come out and just listed them. However, this listing is infamous for another game that sparked the imagination of many gaming historians and gaming enthusiasts, but we'll save that can of worms for another time. Regardless, The Return of Donkey Kong was a mysterious little tile that just seemed to have flashed into existence just barely, 
and then evaporated away with almost no one even noticing that the title was almost a thing at one point. A shame, really, because based on the blurbs about it, it seemed really interesting. But, oh well. And before I go, because this was a short subject that I normally talk about, I will talk about one more cancelled Donkey Kong game on the Famicom, slash NES. Titled Donkey Kong's Fun With Music and set to be a launch title to the Famicom in 1983, this was to be another educational Donkey Kong game in the same vein as Donkey Kong Jr. Math and the Japan-only Popeye's English game. However, rather than teaching anything like math or language, the game was to teach children about music with two game modes, being a music quiz and a karaoke game. The music quiz would have seen up to two players as Mario and Pauline having to strike the correct piano key that corresponded with the notes being played by Donkey Kong on bass. The karaoke game titled Donkey Band would have seen players as part of a band, with Pauline as singer, Mario on piano, and Donkey Kong on bass. Again. And players would have used the second Famicom controller's microphone to sing the correct notes. And yes, this sounds pretty boring compared to the other cancelled Donkey Kong game we just talked about. Regardless, the game received very little attention, being advertised in 1983 on Japanese handbills and magazines promoting the Famicom, and those screenshots I've shown were the only ones taken of the game. Following these advertisements, the game was ultimately cancelled and disappeared from the public eye. As for why the game was cancelled, apparently the game was going to feature real songs. From singer, and I'm probably going to mispronounce this person's name so I'm sorry in advance, but uh, Seiko Matsuda. Uh, the uh, game was going to feature songs from this person, but Nintendo either lost the rights to the songs during development or couldn't acquire them in the first place, and it was too difficult to replace these songs apparently. Why they couldn't just make up new songs is beyond me, although I suppose they were completely rudderless before Koji Kondo came in to pretty much compose Nintendo's entire music library. Apparently, in addition to that, there were very few songs as well due to the songs taking up a lot of space on the Famicom cartridges, which couldn't hold a lot of data at the time. So we can add lack of content as another reason, and also... Uh, apparently, but also unsurprisingly, Nintendo realized that the game was pretty terrible. So, yeah, it got cancelled for those reasons. So, that sucks, I guess. N no, not really, this game didn't really sound that good at all. Yeah, I know, this was a Famicom launch title, but even then, there were pretty good launch titles on the NES slash Famicom. But regardless, apparently a prototype cartridge was given to Hudson Soft to help develop the Family Basic program. Family Basic being the Famicom's little programming product thing. Programming Basic, obviously. Uh, not sure how this would have helped with that, but whether or not that prototype still exists after all these years is uncertain. It would be nice to have this prototype for the purpose of gaming preservation, but I mean, I'm not going to lose any sleep over not having this thing. But still, for the, for the principle of it, it would be nice. But that was the return of Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong's fun with music. The loss of the return of Donkey Kong is pretty disappointing since it would have been cool to see another sequel to Donkey Kong, since Donkey Kong was great! And especially with the ability to play as Donkey Kong, this would have been sick! But, oh well, at least we have Donkey Kong Country to fill that void for us. As for Donkey Kong's fun with music, yeah, I'm not missing that one. That one just sounded pretty boring, so no big loss in that one. But if we can get that prototype and preserve it, that would be great. But anyway, this is K-Steel of Bay Quest signing out. I will see you all later. This was a Cobalt Steel video by MS Bernie. Like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Until next time, see you all later.